This video tutorial is all about DNA sequencing, specifically the principles of DNA sequencing and the development of new DNA sequencing technologies. By the early 1970s, the structure of DNA was known, as were the sequences of base triplets that coded for the various amino acids. However, at this time, it was difficult to work out the sequence of the nucleotide base triplets in genes. In 1969, a gene was isolated from a bacterial chromosome. In 1972, a Belgian molecular biologist sequenced a gene that codes for the protein coat of a virus, MS2. Both scientists worked from the mRNA transcribed from the gene and not the raw DNA itself. RNA is unstable and this whole process was extremely slow and only suitable for very short genes. In 1972, the British biochemist Fred Sanger developed a method that ultimately allowed scientists to sequence the whole genome. This is an image of Fred Sanger and for the work he did, he was awarded the Nobel Prize. Sanger's approach was to use a single strand of DNA as a template for four experiments in four separate dishes. Each dish contained a solution with the four bases, A, T, C, and G, plus an enzyme, DNA polymerase. To each dish, a modified version of one of the DNA bases was added. Now, the base was modified in such a way that once incorporated into the synthesized complementary stand of DNA, no more bases could be added. Each modified base was also labeled with a radioactive isotope. As the reaction progressed, thousands of DNA fragments of varying lengths were generated. The DNA fragments were passed through a gel by gel electrophoresis, such that smaller fragments traveled further, so the fragments were essentially sorted by length. The nucleotide base at the end of each fragment was read according to its radioactive label. So if the first one base fragment had thymine at the end, then the first base in the sequence was T. If the two base fragments had cytosine at the end, then the sequence was TC. If the three base fragments had guanine at the end, then the sequence was TCG, and so on. This method was efficient and safe. Sanger used it to sequence the genome of a phage virus, um, and um, it enabled him to count off the bases one by one from the bands in the piece of gel. However, it was still very time consuming and therefore costly to do. In 1981, Sanger published his sequencing of the human mitochondrial genome, consisting of 37 genes and 16,569 base pairs. In 1984, scientists sequenced the 170 kilobase pair long genome of the Barr virus. In 1995, the genome of the bacterium Haemophilus influenzae was sequenced using this approach. We're now just going to quickly run over how you can clone DNA for this kind of method. The gene to be sequenced first needs to be isolated using restriction enzymes from a bacterium. The DNA is then inserted into a bacterial plasmid, which is the vector, and then into a host, so for example, an E. coli bacterium, where it is then cultured and will divide many times, enabling the plasmid with the DNA insert to be copied many times as well. Each new bacterium will contain a copy of the candidate gene. The lengths of DNA are isolated using plasmid preparation te um, techniques and um, can then be sequenced. Now this image here shows the first DNA sequencing machine output. 
In 1986, the first automated DNA sequencing machine was developed at the California Institute of Technology, based on Fred Sanger's method. Fluorescent dyes, instead of radioactive dyes or tags, were used to label the terminal bases. These dyes glowed when scanned with a laser beam, and the light signature was identified by a computer. This method um, dispensed with the need for technicians to read the autoradiograms, as shown in the image on the left-hand side of your slide. 